Hi there, this is the lecture 5 of this uh, video lecture series and uh, today we are going to discuss about the steps of machine learning projects. So in this uh, uh, tutorial we will discuss what are the steps. So uh, just see these are the steps involved, uh, there, are, there are basically 7 steps involved for uh, doing any kind of machine learning projects. So it may be small kind of project, it may be big kind of pro project but these 7 seven stages the, the seven steps very crucial it you have to understand you have to know these two things if you know properly you can do any kind of projects okay so let's start to discuss uh, one by one so now starts with the uh, this is uh, not belongs to any steps this is the before going to start any project you have to make ready your environment uh, python environment basically when we are doing projects you have to understand what kind of uh, what are the version you are using and uh, basically the another thing is uh, you have to install this uh, scipy uh, scipy ecosystem which holds numpy matplotlib and panda you have to uh, install these things and uh, another thing is scikit-learn scikit-learn provides all the machine learning algorithms so uh, so it is necessary uh, to uh, install these things after these things ready we can jump to our machine learning projects so next is uh, the step one define the problem basically when you start to do any kind of project you you have to be clear what kind of work you are going to do basically according to machine the types of machine learning what uh, the task can be divided into three parts supervised unsupervised and reinforcement re reinforcement learning so accordingly for example classification type of projects who in like a class classification a regression this belongs to supervised machine learning kind of projects and uh, your clustering outline detection this also unsupervised so you have to be clear what kind of work you are going to do either you are going to do any classification or you have to go and do any regression means for example classification type of a uh, thing like uh, you are classifying your data biomedical data maybe or maybe uh, according a lot of uh, examples are there and uh, when you are weather forecasting or um, that is um, goes under uh, some regression type of work and uh, maybe um, mar um, market forecasting a lot of things are there so uh, you have to first define uh, what uh, project you are going to do so um, after, after that the second step is gather the data gather according to your uh, uh, machine learning uh, projects the when you define the projects you have to gather data related to that area for example someone doing a survey work so survey work regarding any banking sector so what it, he have to do he will collect some data regarding to that areas so he go to different places collect data ask some, for example a product a company come over with a new product and uh, the company want to know the product now what is the customer's feedback for that kind of work what they will do they will reach they will collect some samples they will ask people um, some questions accordingly they will verify that the how people people's reaction regarding the product so that is um, this kind of work basically in basically happening in your um, management research or uh, that kind of work we are not going to do that but here basically in machine learning when we are working on uh, in computer science for uh, so when you define for example uh, when you define classification so here in this example i have taken iris data set classification so i will show you that but uh, when you define your problem according to uh, create model in to uh, create a project on that you have to gather data according to your projects okay so uh, either you have to collect data uh, primary and um, primarily means you have to go and uh, make survey and collect data in that way otherwise you can do uh, you can get data from secondary sources like a uh, uci machine learning reporter kagli also providing and google's data set search engine through that you can get some secondary data and uh, once your data you collected you, you have to present you have to uh, present your data in uh, different formats are available like a csv file format or maybe you have to present your data in excel sheets and uh, so you have to uh, present your data in proper format once your data is presented in proper format you have to load the data with the help of libraries now it's better to show one example now i'm going to show you so here uh, I am. I want to do Iris dataset classification. For that purpose, I want to create a model. So uh, now I am going to search Iris dataset, 
and uh, ERIS data set basically available in UCI machine learning repository this is one kind of largest machine learning repository you can uh, call it that so we are taking some time internet slow be disconnected uh, ok so otherwise I have already you um, try to de, uh, get that from UCI machine learning repository and I have already I have already collected that here this is the it is data set and my data set already available in uh, CSV file format so I want to show you this so first remember uh, before going to start you have to present your data in proper file format this is the uh, uh, it is data set it is csv file format see here in this data set uh, how many uh, rows are there so the total number of rows here you can see mean number of rows means number of instance we can say number of object we can say 150 objects are there that means 150 flowers data collected and uh, all the flowers and even three classes are there and uh, one is iris setosa and uh, another class is uh, your uh, iris versicolor and another thing is here your uh, um, so all the all the objects belong to three classes iris virginica so all the three classes are there and uh, basically uh, there are four attributes are there one two three four these are the attributes uh, of the iris data set and this is the class um, class level so this is the data set i have collected now my duty is i have to design a model so how i will do okay here also okay i already downloaded no need to source otherwise you can go here you say machine learning repository you can go here and uh, this is the largest machine here the iris data set available you can go to the folder mm, you can download from that and this is the iris data set you can click on that so Mm, automatically it will download this is the data you can from here you can download and uh, okay and uh, this is the remember that this is the miscellaneous reporter here a lot of data set also available i think today internet is very slow so okay no need to focus on that okay see here this is the machine learning reporter a lot of data sets available according to your project you can color some data here it is uh, your wine data set available your uh, some banking marketing a lot of data set available what kind of project you want to do you can collect and also you can go to Kaggle website Kaggle also providing you search okay I don't want to waste more time you can go to Kaggle website and you can also collect a lot of data set from the Kaggle uh, repository okay so now starts so now I told you gather the data now I call the data this is my data set iris data set now i want to load this data to my python environment i want to load this how i will do i have done this program so i will just run here this is the load before remember that one thing uh, how you cannot load your data and uh, cannot load your uh, file directly to python environment you, ne you need some library so what library you need you have to define before here i need from pandas import read csv this is the code to read my um, uh, data set so here i define the path where my data available he, he, this is the path he, this is the path so you have to define where where your data available you have to define that here i already defined my path name name means it, it indicates the headers headers means here you see there is no headers available so you have to define the headers means attribute this is second attribute third four and this is the class level so i want to give in some header value to them so this part one is sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and last attributes is the class attributes so i have to give so then read csp is the panda through panda through with the help of panda so we can load that it will find this is the file path and this is the names like this so now i want to run this okay load this data set okay now uh, after run i got what data after the, i run that it uh, loaded after loaded i already click on that it is uh, what um, data set or save it is so what how many number of rows i already told you here 150 rows are there so the dimension shows the total number of rows 150 rows are there and how many columns are there five columns are there so here with the help of this i saw this so this is 155 that means number of rows 150 number of column 5 now i if we, you want to see the sample of your data you need to know that or here i want to show first 20 rows uh, so run that 
see here this is the first uh, uh, first 20 rows of your data so that means it indicates that your data properly loaded to your python environment now we can do our work so here if you want this here the first 20 first 20 rows if you randomly want randomly see, randomly see the data set you can click data set dot sample you click on that it will show see it randomly uh, randomly collect out of 150 it randomly collected uh, some uh, 10 number of rows so here you can see so now next is your if you want to know this attribute types here how many attributes here five attributes are there one two three four five if you want to see the kind of uh, value holds each attributes this is integer type or float type or maybe string type if you want to see you just click this code data set dot uh, uh, types okay here this it will show you what kind of data it holds and after that here one thing for classification work you remember that we need to delete this string type we want to make it in integer type or float type or okay so here how we can do so with the help of this code uh, data set that replace so i want to replace this thing in my whole data set i want to place one two three so i just run that okay it already replaced and save in data set if you want to see here what um, changes happen you just here click data set dot sample 10 now i want to again want to see what really changed or not yes you see in the previously here in the class value uh, holds uh, this kind of uh, the number of uh, uh, classes but here it changes to one two three okay now uh, this another thing is so these are the important thing we covered okay we cover this thing we have you have to know this thing so the i loaded the data i and I also after load the data in the second next stage is you have to uh, um, after the loaded data the next step is data summarization in summarization some parts i told so in summarization holds on the summary of your data like a dimension of the data set and uh, attributes and data types of each attribute i already saw i have shown you then uh, uh, sample of a data set and statistical summary if you want to see the statistical summary uh, statistical summary means like mean median you can click here it will show you the some statistics of your data set means uh, each attribute see here sepal is one and this is one attribute this is one attribute this is the one uh, first attribute it will show its mean median mode all kind of these things it will show you maximum value minimum value the statistical feature and this here see class and there are number of count count means total number of rows 150 rows are there minimum value maximum value everything it is showing okay and now then next is uh, after this you have to know also the class distribution class distribution means see this is the data set in the whole data set you have to know how many uh, objects belongs to each class or how many objects so how many instances are there to, to do that to you run this code and uh, it will show you see there are three classes one and two and three and every class is 50 objects are there so in the whole data set here you can check i already changed to one two three okay so class one 50 number of rows class two 50 so uniform kind of you can say uniform data because every class have same number of uh, rows are there so after that uh, the next is this thing summarization over after that uh, another thing is data visualization what is data visualization basically data visualization involves you want to uh, plot some graphs to understand your data clearly and uh, there are two kind of thing we are going to discuss one is uh, your univariate plots and multivariate plots in univariate plots and it will describe about each attributes how we will do with the help of histograms density plots box and whisker plots we will do that in here and in multivariate it shows the relations between each attributes so let's see how we will do with the help of correlation matrix or scatter plot so let's do that in practically so here uh, in correlation between each attributes how it will show uh, if you want to see you can click here and this correlation also goes under the data summarization see here how many attributes are there five attributes sepal length uh, sepal width petal length petal width and class and here in the rows also available in the column also available and it will show the relationship between that the first sepal length and sepal length relation one because both are same so relation is one if value is higher that means similarity is more if value is lower similarity is less negative means very not they are correlated so this type of value will come in, in this your correlation between the attributes 
and uh, basically in univariate plot i told you in univariate plot how many things involve histogram and uh, density plot and box plot let's see and let's make the histogram it is running see uh, this histogram belongs to the class attribute in the, you know class attribute how many how many classes three classes one class how many objects for 50 in, in class 2 50 class three. that means it is showing the counts of uh, each class here also uh, in petal length petal length how many values are there from 0 to 6 you can see that in your uh, petal length you can see that this value range is from 0 to some value range is there and uh, the histogram showing uh, what value how many counts are there so that means in how many values are there and what is their count it is shows in in shows in columns like in the same way sepal width and all things all the data presented here i think you can understand this thing and next thing is density plot density plot also showing the same nearly same thing okay around this density plot also so uh, the, uh, the relationship between each here what is this in density density see uh, this is the sepal length in sepal length it is showing the graph 1 to uh, up to 4 up to 4 5 like this and maximum value available in this range that means from 1 to maybe 4 5 within this range see, you can check here um, from nearly 7.0.75 to and uh, up to 3 most of the values are available this is showing the density this kind of values are more and uh, um, 0.1 to 3 like this value is very less and this point is very less so it is show the uniform uh, what means the density of uh, um, in which density which value more uh, counts are available it is show here so this is the density plot and uh, then another thing we are going to show the box and whisker plot it will show the properties of individual attributes see here sepal length the what it indicates this is the minimum value of the attributes this is the maximum value of the attributes this is the med median and this is the quarter first quartile third quartile and this thing it is showing through that you can say what is the uh, properties of a box plot and whisk whisker plot so these three thing histogram density plots box and whisk, whisker plot is there to visualize the properties of each attributes okay so next is a multivariate i told you multivariate plots so the relations between uh, uh, attributes so okay so here uh, we are going to see that uh, how it is showing this is the relationship showing you can check here this is the um, how many attributes are there five attributes so here these are the here five this is here five and it's showing the relationship between and this if yellow color showing most related and the uh, this color showing mean, mean very less related so it is also showing a relationship between these attributes okay and another thing is this scatter plot you can then draw that scatter plot also showing the relationship between the uh, attributes see here uh, here you can see the sepal length sepal length, these are all uh, attrib five attributes and it, their relationship is showing here you can say what is the uh, what is the uh, what uh, scatter plot um, showing you um, showing you you can verify okay this is the basically the scatter plot and uh, this uh, uh, correlation matrix so the relationship between the in, in, in input variables or we can say attributes so data visualization over and after data visualization what next your pre-processing pre-process the data what is the need of pre-processing basically before uh, okay one thing remember processing and pre-processing processing means doing training of your data and pre-processing before training part before training what we are going to do sometimes your data involves some kind of a missing values so that means for example here the data sometimes some value we forget to put or okay some value did not put properly this is known as missing value and uh, sometimes uh, some noisy data noisy data means uh, this is the sepal petal with the sepal length for example consider another example we call it a data regarding person in age in age column we are putting his uh, phone number this kind of data is known as your uh, this type of data is known as your, your irrelevant data this is that means data is not collected regarding that attributes and sometimes you are wrongly duplicating putting some duplicate value so these are the unnecessary data so we have to clean the data with the help of data cleaning technique we will make a video regarding this pre-processing here i am not going to describe in detail and another thing is transformation because whenever you are collected data you sometimes your data are not in proper format we have to change it to a proper format so this thing involves 
in data transformation we will, we will do on that then next is your data reduction in data reduction two steps involve feature selection and dimensionality reduction data reduction basically you check here here how many rows uh, columns are there five columns sometimes your number of rows are very number of columns are very high and number of rows also very high so and uh, uh, basically um, the number of row, uh, columns number of very high and uh, some columns are unnecessary uh, so we need to delete that okay i will make and discuss these things in another video okay this is known as pre-processing so pre-processing the main goal of pre-processing to enhance the quality of the data so that in while training step while do while we will do training we can make a proper model and it has great impact on classification accuracy or classification performance of a model okay so next is now we are going to processing the processing part involves so uh, now your data is ready so now our sole duty is we have to select model which model based how we can know so for example when we are doing classification type of a task we have to select or select some algorithms some models related to that in a classification a lot of algorithms are available like sbm knn decision tree nearby so first you have to select some algorithms machine classification algorithm otherwise you can select most all the algorithms in classification after selecting the algorithms you have to what do training for training what you have to do you have to do, divide the whole data set into two parts training part and test data set in training data set 80 percent normally basically people taking 80 percent for training and 20 percent for testing so here how many data how many rows are there 150 so 30 20 percent means 30 we 30 number of rows we are going to take for uh, your uh, testing and 120 we are going for uh, your training so now 120 number of rows we are going to and uh, we will select randomly okay so next is after you um, select your training data set now what you have to do you have to train the data with the help of tenfold cross validation so uh, to train all the models with the help of tenfold cross validations uh, so i will show you now so how um, what is before that how we have to understand what is tenfold cross validation the whole data set training data set how much 120 out of 120 it divide the whole data set into 10 parts 10 10 10 parts means uh, how many parts means uh, uh, 120 10 parts means um, 10 percent each part whole 12 obviously each part of, obviously each part will hold 10 uh, 12 parts so um, see here what it will do whole data set divided in 10 parts so individually box individually box content 12 12 12 like this individual will cut 10 so 120 one to total 120 and a uh, 10 every part uh, hold 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent total 100 percent so and uh, um, so whole data set divided in 10 parts now this algorithm will run 10 times in first steps 90% will use it for training and this blue part is used for testing and here we will get this classification accuracy okay performance measures in second iteration so so this work over now next day we will take another uh, one part for testing and remaining we will take for training like this whole part from this from this end to this end in 10, 10 iteration we have to use every part every individual one part for testing and the remaining nine nine parts for training so and every time we will find its classification accuracy and finally how we find the total classification accuracy mean we have to find the mean here okay this is the mean value we will find so what i am discussing i am going to uh, okay after finding the accuracy we will we will compare their classification performance and select which model is best so what i have told you now i am going to show you practically so so you can check here model version first what i did first i collect the data see and data set is in data set is a data frame i want to only the value part remember data set dot values means only in the, it will only take the value part not the header part okay so i taken then uh, first four rows i uh, i put in x and last part i put in your uh, y part okay you check this properly and i split the data into two parts uh, uh, a, a training part and testing part this x train hold the conditional part remember that this x hold your conditional part conditional part means what these are conditional variables and this is a class variable okay y hold the class variable and x hold the conditional variable so the whole this here x train hold the training part training conditional part 
and uh, y ten hold the its corresponding class level exactly here x ten hold the conditional part and uh, y ten hold its corresponding class level so whole data is divided into this part here i mention 20 percent i am using for testing okay so let me run this if you want to see real after splitting if you want to see what is the shape of your data you can check here you find so x ten hold 120 number for rows four columns and uh, y ten holds its corresponding class level 120 like this i think you understand after you got your data divided data now i am going to take this 120 in this part i am going to take for training okay so here i have taken some models some logistic regression model and these are some models k and some cart this is a decision tree gaussian estimate support vector machine some model i have taken and uh, i will check which model is better that finally I will select that model so here I have some these are the codes and uh, this remember that this is a 10 fold cross validation I have taken I already discussed what is 10 fold cross validation so now I am going to run okay see here after i run and this is this is showing this part showing the uh, mean mean and this is showing the standard variation standard deviation okay so i got this is the my classification accuracy of all the models uh, so from that i can decide which model is better so here you can see uh, sbm support vector machine showing giving better classification accuracy so i can use i can select this model for my uh, i can select this model for my work so okay so here and uh, if you want to call compare these algorithms you can also do this here you can plot the diagrams uh, if you want to plot the um, this is the uh, what uh, box plot it's showing this is these are the algorithms and this is the plot so this is the minimum value minimum accuracy maximum accuracy median so like this it's showing see here this is for support vector machine okay so you can compare uh, with the help of this box plot what is the you can see in most this is the see here this color showing the median median means in this median is highest for the support vector machine this model's performance is very better compared to others okay and uh, how we got this uh, because uh, see this algorithm runs how many times this run uh, uh, basically in support uh, so this is run five how many algorithms are there that time it will run how many algorithm three six it runs six times and uh, in every time this cross validation run 10 times 10 fold cross validation and in 10 times cross validation it collected some result you can if you want to see the result also you can see because the result will show you uh, because it is run 10 times na? so 10 times result will show you so if you want to see what is the result you can also see uh, run here Uh, it only showing how many parts cb dot results see here this is the part one value showing only because one value showing at uh, last value to holds actually and it is on how many times and this value showing this is la this is last value indicates see this is the ten this is the tenfold cross validation result of for your uh, support vector machine because the support vector machine run the last okay if you want to see if you want to see individually every time you can also uh, print here okay this is not necessary for now okay so now you this is the box plot you compare their algorithm so finally from this uh, training we understand one point the support vector machine giving the highest classification accuracy so we will take for uh, we select this model so finally we select this model and here after we select the model this next job is so we and so this type over in this step we select our best model this is the spm the last step is make prediction and improve uh, improve the result so now uh, your model is ready i want to prediction prediction for what for test data you already know that 20 percent i saved uh, for testing part so you uh, now your model is ready you give this 20 percent for prediction your model is ready the model can predict here i am using support vector machine you can do the prediction here okay I already selected and this is a prediction if you want to see the prediction on this is the prediction but if you want to see the prediction you can also see here mm, prediction
this is a predicted value actually actually how many uh, uh, basically your x state how many rows 30 i told you 30 rows this is the prediction of their 30 rows okay the prediction of your model and uh, after that if you want to evaluate your model you can check here evaluate means it's a classification performances you can check here so uh, this is not this is what white and i think white test so this is you can see this is the uh, your models uh, different parameters precision recall f1 score here this is the confusion matrix and this is accuracy of your model this is accuracy of our model you see uh, this is the accuracy according to a test data set so and another thing is if you want to um, improve your accuracy of your model some methods are there like a uh, some methods are there, like a, your uh, creating ansible classifier one test ansible classifier like bagging boosting okay i will make video on that now i'm not going to discuss remember that ansible methods like bagging and boostings can improve the classification accuracy of your classifier and another thing optimize the hyper parameters actually every machine learning uh, every machine learning algorithms have some parameters uh, if you we um, optimize the parameters accuracy may uh, increase if you want to check the what are the parameters you can check support vector machine svm svm in your cycle learn cycle learn hold the code so you can go there and uh, so you, you want to know what are the parameters you can check there see this is a code for uh, support vector machine these are the parameters involved and if you change the parameters accordingly the classification accurate can be improved okay i will make every steps whatever i discuss seven stages i will make videos on the on on, on basis of some important steps so these are the uh, algorithms these are the things um, over and uh, if you understand the seven steps you can create any kind of uh, machine learning projects here only i have shown you some simple type of uh, what uh, simple kind of uh, um, uh, projects in this series data set you can create big um, projects on that so i hope you understand if you have uh, any problem in doubts you can uh, you can uh, give your comment you can put your question on these comment sections okay thank you